What's happening, YouTube? What's happening, YouTube? Myron Golden here. And uh, Friday morning, not a little after 10, but it's okay. I'm going um, to share with y'all um, a concept that I just stumbled upon. And uh, it happened. It's so interesting how stuff happens. You know, I was, I was on a plane. This was many years ago. I was on a plane from San Diego, California to, um, is the sound good? Oh, okay. Uh, why are you messing with me, Zach? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So um, anyway, so I was on a plane from San Diego, Cal San Diego, California to Baltimore, Maryland, sat down beside this young dude. His name was Austin. He lived in Boston. I'm not even making that up. It's serious. His name was Austin. He lived in Boston. He was a physicist. So I said, hey, man, what do you do for a living? He said, well, I said, my name is Myron Golden. He said, I'm Austin. And um, I said, what do you do for a living? He said, I'm a physicist. I said, wow. Austin from Boston, the physicist. And so we talked about physics, literally. I don't know it sounds weird, but only a geek would do this, right? But we, I talked about physics from San Diego all the way to Baltimore. Like for four and a half hours, we talked about physics. And I was so amped um, with this conversation. And one of the questions I asked him, I said, so what's your favorite physics principle? And he said, my favorite physics principle is that all principles are microcosms of each other. I thought, ooh, that's so good. And I know what I think that means, but why don't you tell me what you think it means so when I tell people what you said, I can tell them what you meant instead of what I thought you meant. He said, well, what it means is if you take a principle out of one arena and you put it in another arena, it still has to be true, right? In fact, um, side note, parentheses inside the parentheses, probably not good sentence structure. But anyway, uh, my brother, my birthday was last Saturday. My brother bought me flying lessons, right? A, fly, a flying lesson for my birthday. So we drove down to Fort Myers and flew over Fort Myers. It was so much fun. I hadn't flown a plane since like 2007. And it was so much fun. And so um, the next video I do, I'm going to do a video on um, the physics of, like the physics of flight, how to have high flying finances. In other words, if you take the physics of an airplane and you apply it to your finances, it will make your finances fly like a plane. It's going to be so cool, but that's not this video. That's the next video. So anyway, so I started thinking about how all principles are microcosms of, e of each other. And then I started thinking about like the laws of energy, right? And so I'm going to show you all some things about business and how to grow your business, how to grow your sales, how to scale your business, how to get more people to say yes when you're making offers to them by applying the laws of physics. I hope, I hope you're ready. Okay, so here we go. So the first law is the law of energy conservation. So the law of energy states... Some people call it the law of energy. Some people call it the law of energy con uh, con conservation. So the law of energy states that everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. Now, if you understand that everything is energy and energy is neither created nor destroyed, it just changes form. That means like if you take, I I'm going to give you the simplest example I can. If you take a tree, you go out in the forest, you chop down a tree, right? And you cut it up into pieces of wood and you cut it up into logs and you throw it in your fireplace. The energy of the wood turns into the energy of fire. The energy of the fire turns into the energy of heat. And then it turns, the energy of the fire turns the wood into the energy of ash, right? And then you take the ashes and you can take them out and put them in your garden. And they'll turn into the energy of fertilizer. And so the whole, it doesn't ever, the wood doesn't ever cease to exist. It just changes into something else. Well, if you understand the law of energy conservation, everything that you have in your life Everything that's showing up in your life is something that you've translated your energy into, right? What if, what, for instance, think of it like this. What if your mind is a supercomputer, right? What if your mind's like a supercomputer? And what if all of the results in your life are like something that you 3D printed? So what if, what if your mind is a supercomputer and it's connected to this, to this big, ginormous, universal neural network and what if you 3D printed your house and you 3D printed your car and you 3D printed your wardrobe and you 3D printed your bank account? What if that's the way it works? Because it does. If you don't like what you're 3D printing, what you have to do is you have to change the energy of the program in your mind. If you change what's going on in here, you'll change what's showing up out there. And hopefully this is making sense to you. But everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. So one of the things I teach people like when they come to my events is Everything is energy. Energy is neither created or destroyed. It just changes form. But high income is the result of high energy, right? High income can only come from high energy. Low energy cannot produce high income. Why? Because wealth is a high energy result. So if I were to state it in physics language, the physics language would be no high energy result 
will ever flow to a low energy source. That's why one of the most important things you can do as an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur or an artist or an aspiring artist or anybody who wants to do, do achieve some high achievement, you have to become a source of high energy. If somebody says, how you doing? You say, fine. I know you're broke. Why? Because nobody's gonna be attracted to somebody who's fine. How you doing? I'm above the dirt. So were you below the dirt yesterday? I'm confused, right? And so, so because our answers are low energy answers that don't attract anybody to us, they don't attract opportunity. People who have great opportunities don't share those opportunities with people who, I'm above the dirt, I'm fine, right? So like people think I'm being over the top when I say, when somebody says, how you doing? And I say, utterly fantastic, better now than I'm talking to you. I don't wanna give you a low energy answer. Fine, I don't wanna give you a medium energy answer. I'm okay, I'm still living. Like, were you expecting to be dying? I'm, what is that answer? Or my, my, one of my least favorites of least favorites, not too bad, what does that mean? I'm bad, but not too bad? What is, what is that answer, right? Come up with, like nothing good can be attracted to that energy. Everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. So what we have to do is we have to make sure if we want to attract high energy results to us, great relationships, love, gratitude, good, uh, uh, great finances, we want to attract opportunities, we must become a source of high energy. Why? Because everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. And so if all of the things around you are emitting low energy, it's because you were the source of low energy that produced those low energy results. So if you don't like what you're producing, like become a source of high energy. Okay, second law. It's really interesting how these, how these laws oppose each other, right? The second law is the law of entropy. And most people don't think of entropy as being something that negatively affects business, but entropy negatively affects everything. What is entropy? Entropy is anything left to itself tends to move more and more towards disorder. That's the second law of energy. What is it? It's called entropy. Every, anything left to itself tends to move more and more towards disorder. What does that mean? That means if I plant a garden and I refuse to pull the weeds, eventually the weeds will take over the garden. It means if I don't brush my teeth, my teeth will rot out of my head. You do not have to have intention to deteriorate. Deterioration, decline, um, um, corrosion, corruption, bad things, don't require intention, they only require neglect. That's the law of entropy. So you don't have to try to destroy a business to destroy a business. All you have to do is not have any intention to grow the business, and all you have to, if you don't have any intention to grow the business, the business will automatically decline. Why? Because the law of entropy is at work. You do not have to intend to do evil in order to do evil. But in order to do good, you have to intend to do good. You don't have to intend for your business to, de to decline and to shrink and to shrivel up and die. That will happen automatically if you just do nothing. But in order for your business to grow, it requires intention. By the way, this is why, the, I, I, like, and you may have heard me say this before, this is why the number one common denominator successful business owners have in common is that they focus on intention and they ignore distraction. The number one common denominator of people who fail and struggle is they ignore intention and focus on distraction. Now, I'm gonna give you the Myron Golden definition of intention and the Myron Golden definition of distraction. The Myron Golden definition of intention is focusing on, focusing on intention means you focus on things that actually move the needle in your favor. You focus on doing things that when you do those things, they actually make a difference. When I say focus on distraction, I'm talking about you're focused on things that do not move the needle in your favor. And so many people, in fact, I'm gonna say the majority of people, at least in the United States, maybe in the world, the majority of people in the United States focus way more on distraction than they do intention. And their focus on distraction is why their life is falling apart. And they think, but, but, but I, I, I didn't want my life to be like this, but you didn't have a plan for growth. That's why you're in decline. What do I mean focus on distraction? I mean you're rushing home from work to watch your favorite television show and they don't pay you to watch that show. Instead of figuring out how you could do something when you're coming home from work, come home from work to work on a business that could retire you from that job that you hate and the boss that doesn't like you. But most people don't understand it requires energy to overcome entropy because if you don't use energy to overcome ent entropy, entropy is automatically gonna overcome energy. 
hopefully this is making sense to you. And I know I'm ranting and raving like a maniac right now because I'm really amped and I should have drank coffee after I did the video <laughs> instead of before I did the video. So what's the next law? The next law is the law of polarity. And the law of polarity states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So <laughs> notice, so that means for every positive, there's a negative. For every negative, there's a positive. And that, that means there's, there's no such thing as a bad situation. There's no such thing as a good situation. They're just situations. And all situations have a bad side and a good side. You get the one you focus on. What does that mean? Well, have you ever seen a one-sided piece of bread? Have you? Have you, seen, have you ever seen a one-sided piece of paper? Have you ever seen a one-sided coin? Do you know why you've never seen a one-sided piece of paper, a one-sided piece of bread, a one-sided pancake, a one-sided coin? Not because it doesn't exist, but because it cannot exist. It is impossible for a one-sided anything to exist. Why? Because in the universe in which we live, in the realm that God created for us to live in, everything has to have two sides. People say, I'm having such a bad day. It's not really that you're having a bad day. It's just that you're focused on the ne negative aspects of your day. People say to me, Myron, have you always been this positive? I say, I'm not positive. I'm just aware. What does that mean? Here's what it means. It means I woke up this morning, and I'm aware of the fact that there are people who went to bed last night and didn't wake up this morning. Oh, that's what I mean when I say aware. Thank you, God. I woke up this morning. That's a gift. So I already opened a gift when I opened my eyes. Oh, there's another gift. I opened my eyes, and they can see. Guess what, y'all? I know how to open my eyes, but I don't know how to make them see. Sight is a gift. When I hear a bird singing outside my window, the gift of hearing is activated. I get up and my legs hold me up. That's a gift. I have running water in my house. Do you know how many millions, hundreds of millions of people there are in the world that don't have running water in their house? Do you know how many millions of people there are in the world that don't have a house? I have a house and I have running water in my house and I have electricity in my house. It's a gift. You say, what are you doing? What I am doing, when I wake up in the morning, I'm getting so zoned into all of my gifts if I stub my toe on the way down the stairs, I'm not gonna say, I'm having a bad day. I've already opened up too many gifts for a stub toe to ruin that for me. So the law of polarity says, no matter how thin you slice a piece of bread, it always has two sides. It has a positive side, it has a negative side. You get the one you focus on, because the one you focus on, you magnify. Well, the last one that I'm gonna talk about, or the last two, it's, it's kind of one, but it's actually two sides of this. It's the, it's the two sides of the same coin, is the law of, number four, is the law of inertia. And inertia states that an object at rest will remain at rest until and unless it's acted upon by an outside force. This is why it's so important for you to focus on the positive aspects of the things going on in your life so that when you show up, you can show up as a source of high energy and then, if something is, if you have an obstacle blocking your way, you can become the outside force that when you hit it, it starts to move. It, by the way, the first time you hit it, it doesn't move a lot. I believe that this is the number one reason, inertia is the number one reason new entrepreneurs quit. People say, I, I tried to be an entrepreneur and I failed. You didn't fail, you quit. You stopped being the outside force before you gained enough momentum in that thing that was blocking your, your, blocking your way. And what you have to do is you have to become the outside force that keeps hitting that thing over and over. And at first it doesn't feel like it's moving at all. At first it feels like it's just hurting your shoulder. And then you hit it again, and you hit it again, you hit it again, and all of a sudden it starts moving a little bit. Okay, it's moving a little bit. Hit it again, now it's moving a little faster. Hit it again, now it's moving a little faster. And so your objective in life, when it comes to obstacles, when it comes to new opportunities, is to overcome inertia by being the outside force. And then, which brings us to the fifth physics principle that applies to our business, and that is the principle of momentum. Momentum is one of your greatest friends. What is momentum? An object in motion will continue in motion until and unless it's acted upon by an outside force. So my objective as an entrepreneur is to create sales momentum. I wanna overcome sales inertia, and I wanna create sales momentum. I wanna overcome business growth inertia, and I wanna create business growth momentum. Momentum and inertia are the opposites of each other. And by the way, if I am creating inertia, I'm overcoming momentum. I would recommend that you not do that. By the way, that's why it's always a bad idea when you're doing a sales presentation, from a physics standpoint I'm talking about, it's always a bad idea when you're doing a sales presentation to spend too much time Focus on the pieces, why? Because every time you show them another piece and it's got this piece and it has this piece, you got five videos and 16 audios and you got all of it and you start showing them all the little, all the little widgets in your thing, 
You're slowing them down and creating inertia that's causing them to put on the brakes while they can evaluate each of those individual things. But what you have to do instead is you create momentum by showing them a vision for the future and then being an outside force that keeps coming along and hitting them with point after point after point that causes them to want to move in that direction. Do you realize every time you are doing a sales presentation, every sales presentation you are doing, the words that are coming out of your mouth are either creating inertia and overcoming momentum or creating momentum and overcoming inertia. And what you have to learn how to do as an entrepreneur, if you're serious, not curious about creating success in your life and in your business, is when you are talking, when you are speaking, when you are creating, when you are creating a sales presentation, you have to overcome inertia and create momentum. You have to overcome inertia in the people you're talking to. Like you get, you're, you're talking to a prospect and they're sitting there like this. What's your job? Your job is to make the words that are coming out of your mouth cause their arms to move. Then they move a little bit and then you create a, like you hit them with some more words and then they start leaning in. And then the next thing you know, you're, you hit them with so much more and now they're more excited about your presentation than you are. Why? Because you're overcoming inertia, you're creating momentum and that's how you create success in your business. I am telling you, when you apply the law of entropy, I mean the law of energy and you become a source of high energy and you intentionally overcome entropy by focusing on intention and ignoring distraction and then you fo focus you use the law of polarity to focus on the positive aspect of everything in your life and that went by focusing on the positive you amplify and magnify it and then you overcome inertia and create momentum it might take 90 days it might take a year it might take three years but eventually there'll be a knock on your door and life's gonna be standing there and say, congratulations, you're a success. So hopefully this will help you to go and apply these principles to your business, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in insurance, whether you're in multi-level marketing, whether you're an author, a speaker, a coach, a consultant, whether you're in the fitness industry, whether you're a doctor, a nurse, what, regardless of what business you're in, hopefully understanding these principles and applying them to your life with intention will help you create the life you deserve and the life you desire. I'm Myron Golden. Thank you so much for sharing this time with us. And if you loved what you heard on this video, like, comment, subscribe. Um, what happened? Oh, say hi to people. Um, Laura wants me to say hi to people. Hi, Rebecca Page. Hi, Queens of Virtue. Hi, True Vision Knowledge Law and Shauna Martin and Marcel and Real Talk Stripes and Lee Shalom with all the fire. Love the fire. Gotta say, I love the fire. Okay, appreciate you guys, and we'll see y'all on the next video. Bye for now.